Uh, consider someone qualified if uh, he or she uh, doesn't have any mental, uh, nervous, organic, functional disease, or psychiatric uh, disorder that's likely to interfere with the ability to do the job. Safe and effective um, operation of the commercial motor vehicle requires, of course, uh, you know, physical strength, but also uh, requires coordination, ability to focus, you know, ma maintain attention, uh, and also to react uh, promptly. So when we're talking about the, psych the, the psychological disorders and also uh, the substance abuse, keep in mind it's all about safety. We're, we're, we're thinking in terms of, okay, whatever's going on with this person, is he or she going to be able to safely operate? Because uh, our obligation, your obligation as the medical examiner is, you know, to protect the public. So it's all about safety. So you think about memory, reasoning, attention, and judgment. That's kind of recurring themes uh, through all of this. You want to consider, uh, you know, somatic as well as psychosomatic <clears throat> complaints, and they, they have to be um, uh, thorough, thoroughly examined uh, in determining overall fitness. And of course, any disorder that might be incapacitating, you have to pay at attention to. A driver with an active psych psychopsychotic disorder may be unpredictable, have, have unpredictable behavior. So that's what by becomes important because we're thinking all about safety. Now, regardless of what you think you learned, you know, when we all had uh, you know, psychiatry at some, uh, at some point in our training, the way FMCSA um, uh, classifies uh, psychological disorders, the mood disorders they view as manic and depressive. Of course, now we, we call this um, uh, uh, bipolar. But uh, the manic episodes, of course, these people ex exhibit uh, grandiosity, but also will have you know, poor judgment. And of course, depression, uh, they have re you know, s uh, slowed reacti reactive times, uh, poor, poor judgment. The personality disorders, which they go into, are considered safety risks because these people can be impulsive you know, and, and act in, in a manner which is uh, uh, not consistent with safely uh, doing, doing the job. They tend to also be very inflexible in, in, their, in their habits. Now, the risk factors associated with personality disorders interfere, again, because of attention, concentration, memory, visual, spatial uh, functions, impulse control, judgment, and of course, the ability to problem solve, you know, to react in new and novel situations. Remember what your job description is. Your job description is to make sure, that is to establish that this driver, that he or she can safely pull off the job, uh, safely fulfill the requirements of being a um, uh, com commercial motor vehicle operator. So where do you get the information? There's, of course, the history. That's what's supplied by uh, the person you're examining. Uh, the objective data, your physical, and then uh, you've, you've heard this several times today, I'm sure I know, I just heard Dr. Weiss comment. Anything else that you think you need, don't forget you are permitted to request additional information from other sources. The medical certification, remember it's your name that's ultimately going on that card. The medical certification really depends on your overall impression. So you're doing a lot of observing, you're gathering information. Uh, there are only two things today that I'm going to mention that are absolute disqualifiers. Other than that, it becomes a matter of medical judgment. Now, when you evaluate someone in this setting, you should do it the same way as if it were your private patient ask the same questions that you would of anyone who you're assessing for uh, psychological uh, concern. So the FMC, uh, FMCSA exam <coughs> you know, report, again, it's the, the history, your exam, and then anything additional that you request that you think that you need. And you are allowed to ask. You are allowed to dig in. You're encouraged to dig in. And in some cases, you're required to uh, go deeper into, into the history. 
And again, you're looking at the appropriateness. It's your overall, your overall impression of, of the person uh, in front of you. Now, you are to find out, you are to ask, or you, you are to evaluate, does the driver have a psychiatric um, uh, disorder? Is there altered state of consciousness? What about the medications? Medications, and this, this is going to be a recurring theme as well, does the medic, do the medications indicate some underlying disorder that might be of concern, maybe disqualifying? Or is the entity that's being treated potentially disqualifying? Ask about alcohol, and you ask about alcohol both when, when you're assessing this, the psychological as well as when we get to the substance abuse part, because there is a large overlap between the psychological disorders and substance abuse. Oh, and is, is the uh, driver using any habit-forming uh, medications, legally or Ill illegally. Uh, here are a list of things that you, you should think about. You can read them uh, as well as I can. But remember, it's the, your overall impression is the way the driver presents. And this is what, what you're ob observing. Here are recommendations of what you can, of what, what you can ask. The only one I would uh, uh, point out that I consider an overlap is the very last one. And that is, have you ever used medications for a purpose other than what was prescribed? This is crossover in that not only is it useful in evaluating psychological disorders, but also substance abuse. A lot of people are using drugs that are legally prescribed, but for reasons other than uh, uh, they, were, they were originally intended. And you are permitted to inquire about work history, the driving history, drug and alcohol history, um, military history, what type of discharge, and legal history. This is all OK and appropriate, and in some cases required, when you are evaluating someone potentially for a psychological um, uh, ent entity. Also, you are re required. Regulation, uh, you should have heard today, regulations, when they say it's regulation, that means you must do it. Uh, if that's not been covered, anything's regulation, you're required to do. So, does the driver have a tremor? Is there a large liver and spleen? Signs of alcoholism or prob problem drinking or evidence of substance abuse? Don't forget, you must document any question you ask where there's an affirmative, a yes. Not only do you document the response, but you must document that you discussed, uh, that you discussed with the driver uh, uh, the topic, the onset. And you're going to see this over and over. It's the, it's the, uh, the same criteria. The onset date, the diagnosis, the medications, the dose and frequency, and any current limitations that he or she was given before, before arriving in front of you. Review the potential negative effects of any of the uh, medications. And of course, document any abnormal findings uh, that you have, as well as what are the necessary steps uh, to correct so that you can uh, certify the driver, recertify the driver uh, for, for, the ma for the maximum. Now, as far as the psychological entities are concerned, there is the mental disorder itself. But keep in mind, there all, you also must consider the medications that are being used, because they're going to uh, in, impact the, the ability of uh, the driver to perform. And then the residual symptoms once the, uh, once the whatever it is, uh, the psychological entity is being treated, once it has been successfully, uh, successfully treated. Just reviewing, remember the requirement is good judgment, impulse control, problem solving. Keep in mind the overall requirements of the driver, and it's your overall impression of the driver's ability to do the job. 
Now, when you read through that handbook, the one that was just uh, uh, was just waved up in front of us, it says medical judgment, but nowhere are they going to give you guidance on what is good medical judgment. They say, well, you know, you're a phys you're the practitioner. Uh, we're not going. We, the regulators, are not going to tell you. You exercise good medical judgment. Moreover, in terms of impairment from medications, uh, it's in there that it's the level of impairment comparable to a, a blood alcohol of 0.04. Now, that's that's a magic number, in that you know 0.04 is the uh, is the uh, blood, the blood alcohol, the breath alcohol number at which a driver must be pulled out uh, of service. Uh, but I don't think you're going to find, I know I've looked for it, you're not going to find anywhere in, 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 uh, in the literature to tell you what dose or what drug level of any given drug is going to give you the equivalent impairment of a blood alcohol of 0.04. Nevertheless, that is FMCSA standard. So let's start talking about some of the actual entities that are uh, of interest. And uh, as we go through these, there, there are some numbers that are worth memorizing for the purposes of taking the exam. Now, the essential features of adult onset ADHD, of course, we're seeing an epidemic of that, as well as the use of uh, the amphetamines uh, to go along with it. Uh, again, it's, it's uh, age inappropriate impulsiveness react, uh, reactions. And before you, can, before you may uh, certify or recertify uh, that driver, <clears throat> you have to be satisfied that uh, it is being effectively, effectively treated. Not only is it the, the behavior, but there's also uh, overlap of substance abuse with the with personality disorders. Um, and you have to take into consideration uh, the, the side effects. A large number of these people are going to uh, respond very well to certain medications. I put a little asterisk next to the dextroamphetamine because that is one, of course, that will, if they're on that, that's Adderall, Vyvanse, a lot of others, that will show up in the drug test. And while the, the drug test is not uh, by definition, a part of the medical exam, just be aware that that, that that will show up. So, you do not certify so, someone with uh, adult onset a, you know, ADHD until you're certain that it's effectively treated. Most, uh, most of these entities that we're going to review, there's a, a minimum waiting time and a maximum length of time for which, for which you're permitted to certify. Notice that this one and one other that we'll mention does not have a minimum wait out time. So this one you may certify as soon as you are confident that it's effectively uh, being effectively treated. And uh, the wording that, that appears over and over and therefore is going to appear over and over in, in, in my slide just to make the point. Make sure the driver is complying with the treatment program, which also always make sure there is a treatment program. So make sure the driver is com uh, compliant and that there actually is a, a treatment plan. That the driver is tolerating uh, the, the treatment, you know, the, me uh, the medications, and has, a, has had a comprehensive medical evaluation by someone competent to do that. Uh, and who also knows the requirements of the job. That is what the job description of being a commercial uh, driver is. The maximum, again, this is the kind of stuff you'd expect to see in a multiple choice exam, the maximum for which you may certify is one year. And as you've heard, you certainly are allowed to do shorter, but the maximum is one year for adult onset um, ADHD. Do not recertify if there's an active psychosis. That this comes up in all the entities, and uh, at the end of this section, we'll talk about uh, you know the one uh, def, uh, the one disqualifier. <laughs> and if there are any of these prominent negative signs, and these 
same prominent negative signs appear throughout, uh, through, throughout the handbook, throughout the regulation. So, you know, compromise judgment, uh, attention difficulties, suicidal uh, behavior, ideation, or personality disorder that repeatedly is uh, being, being disruptive. And of course, any side effects that interfere with the driver's ability to do the job. In terms of uh, the major depression, you know, they, they look at it as manic and depressive. The, you know, as we've already mentioned, you know, the mania, these people are expansive, they can be unpredictable, ex uh, exhibit uh, poor, poor judgment. Depression, among all the other, th uh, the other things, think just of safety, of course, sleep disorder, uh, and as well as, uh, as well as fatigue. Uh, antidepressants, of course, if you are, are used, uh, uh, but remember, there's also the comorbidity that goes along uh, with substance abuse, which frequent, frequently overlaps with, um, with psychological. Where is it? There we go. Okay. Uh, you had a presentation on sleep, at least, you know, uh, there is, to, to oversimplify it, a complex relationship between um, sleep disorders and depression, uh, early morning awakening, uh, for instance. Uh, can, uh, is a, uh, can be um, an indicator of impending uh, uh, relapse of, um, of depression. Uh, so just, just keep, keep this in mind. Now, for bipolar, there is a minimum waiting time. That is, you may not, you may not certify or recertify until there's been six months symptom-free without suicidal behavior. If there has been anything more serious, su suicidal behavior, then you have, to, uh, you have a, a minimum one year wait out before you may uh, recertify this person. And also throughout all the regulations, whenever there's more than one minimum, you always take the longer one. So if there's something else you're dealing with that has a longer wait out period, that's the one you have to pay attention to. Again, the maximum is one year. It's kind of easy because they, they have the same maximums. Maximum one year. And again, the requirement is that the drivers had met, met the minimum uh, wait out time, symptom free, has complied with the treatment plan. And again, always make sure there's a treatment plan, is tolerating the treatment, and has been evaluated by someone competent to make that diagnosis, who is also familiar with what the requirements of, of the job are. You do not certify if the person is having an active psychosis, as out of touch with reality, hearing voices, having hallucinations. The same prominent um, negative side of, uh, I'm sorry, the same negative symptoms, uh, the same ones we've been talking about. Again, monitoring at least every two years, that this person must be uh, monitored at least every two years, again, by someone competent to uh, make that diagnosis and who is familiar with the requirements um, of, of the job. Yeah. So the ma major depression, you know, consists of these, uh, the depressive episodes, as well as the other symptoms you're familiar with. Keep in mind that some people will relapse, uh, and there is risk of suicide, uh, uh, certainly for the first five years, most likely within, within the first uh, few years. Uh, you know, what precipitates the depressive episode, you know, the cause of depression is not always clear, although it is, uh, it is recognized that most of these people have had some kind of a stressful, stressful event within um, the last uh, six months prior to the, uh, the uh, 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 pr prior to, to demonstrating uh, the, the depression. Several drugs are used, the antidepressants, keep in mind the antidepressants, as well as many of the other medications are sedating. And of course, there are some non-pharmacologic treatments, electric, electric uh, shock, ECT, 
as well as TMS, transcranial magnetic um, uh, uh, stimulation. There is a waiting period, again, six months if there's not been a psychotic break, one year if there has been, this is the minimum waiting period. Uh, the maximum that you may recertify, again, same one year. And uh, you have uh, the, 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 sa the same qualifications. The driver has met the waiting time, uh, tolerating the treatment, all the same things. And again, that that diagnosis was made by someone competent to make that diagnosis who is familiar with the job description of a commercial motor vehicle operator. You do not certify, again, <clears throat> Recurrent theme, if there's an active psychosis, the same prominent um, uh, negative symptoms. Monitoring and testing, again, every two years. Evaluated by someone who's competent to, to make that diagnosis, who knows the job. And, oh, and also, I, I should have mentioned some of these others. You're, you're required to tell the driver that he or she should report to whoever the, the health care provider is or someone at the company or whoever the appropriate medical person is, if there's been a recurrence, the requirement is tell the driver to do this within 30 days. A best practice would be tell the driver, do it immediately. Don't, don't wait a full month if you're experiencing new, um, new symptoms. Now, the personality disorders, uh, the, the, the one thing to remember about the personality disorder is they, they can be uh, very, very disruptive, but the key word is repeatedly. So one, one outburst, you know, one episode of misbehavior doesn't uh, push you into the personality disorder category, but it's something that has to be, uh, you know, repeatedly disruptive. Now, notice that this is another one that does not have a minimum weight out. It's your judgment as to if it is under control. But then uh, there is the maximum one year. And again, they make it easy for you to memorize because they're all maximum one year. Uh, and do not recertify. Again, the same things. It's active psychosis, all the, all the, neg all the, negative, uh, all the negative things. Keep in mind also <clears throat> a lot of overlap between the personality disorders and drug and alcohol uh, abuse. You know, uh, what I would suggest to you is what, whether you're looking at substance abuse or one of the psychological entities, if you see one, always think of the other. You know, the overlap is somewhere in the range of 25%. Now, schizophrenia and the schizophrenia-like disorders. So what they call chronic schizophrenia, chronic schizophrenia. That's the only entity that by definition is a disqualifier. The point I've tried to make through, through all these prior slides is ultimately it's your decision whether this person is safe to certify, safe to put on the road. But chronic schizophrenia is by definition a disqualifier. That person cannot, may, not be, uh, may not be certified. Keep in mind, though, that there are some schizophrenia-like entities. They're listed at the bottom there. Schizophreniform disorder, brief reactive psychosis, schizoaffective disorder, delusional disorder. Now, from a regulatory point of view, you're making the decision active chronic schizophrenia or one of the others. Now, if, like, like, most, like most of us, we had this somewhere in our training, haven't read about these si si since that rotation or wherever you got exposed, it's probably worth spending a few minutes you know, getting like a one paragraph review. Can't take you more than 15, 20 minutes to remind yourself of what each one of these is. And remember, you're not being asked to be psychiatrist. You're not being asked to make the diagnosis. You're just being asked to differentiate is it chronic, schiz <clears throat> chronic schizophrenia or one of these others? Because then the, what you're permitted to do in terms of recertification is, uh, is a bit different. So if it's one of the related psychotic disorders, there has to be six months symptom-free if it was one of, you know, one of the others. 
brief, brief reactive, schizophrenic form, whatever. That is no, no break with being in touch with reality. Um, minimum one year if there has been a psychotic break. Minimum one year symptom free along with all the other ca um, caveats. You do not, you do not certify if there's uh, chronic schizophrenia, active schizophrenia, active psychosis, again, hallucinations, hearing voices, all that sort of thing. And again, the same, again, they've made it easy for you to remember reevaluation uh, re at least every two years by somebody competent who knows the requirements of, of the job. Now, transitioning over to substance abuse, uh, FMCSA feels that someone is qualified uh, to be a commercial motor vehicle operator if he or she is not using a Schedule One, that is a prohibitive drug, or any other habit-forming drug, with the exception that that medication, that drug has been prescribed by somebody who has authority to prescribe, and that's going to vary from state to state, who, you know, who's permitted to prescribe, and, and that that person is familiar with the demands of the job, knows the job description of being a commercial motor vehicle uh, operator. One exception. One exception, and this is FMCSA only, so if you're doing other DOT exams that are not FMCSA, this rule doesn't apply, but for FMCSA, methadone is a disqualifier. Again, I don't need to tell you the requirement for, um, uh, I'm sorry, the association between substance abuse medications, whether take, being taken legally or not, and, cra and crash risk. Also keep in mind that most substance abuse is polysubstance abuse. You know, the idea that alcohol only or my drug of choice only, that, that, that really is very unusual. So uh, if, you're seeing, if you see one, th uh, think of the other. If there's, you know, if it's drugs, Think of alcohol as alcohol, certainly uh, think of drugs as well. Remember your job description. The medical examiner's fundamental obligation is to evaluate the driver to see if he or she is safe uh, to, to be, doing the, be doing the drug. Uh, I'm sorry, to be doing the job. In terms of evaluating the driver, again, this is regulation. This is one of, one of the areas where you actually check the box yes or no, answer is yes, you, not only must you pursue that, but you must document. If, it, if you didn't write it down, it didn't happen. So if there's a yes to anything in terms of alcohol, how the alcohol is used, the pattern of the alcohol use, you've got, you've got to um, evaluate that. Same thing with the use of, narco of any habit-forming medication, uh, whether it's been legally prescribed um, or not. In terms of alcohol, is there a consumption pattern that indicates that there may be a, a problem or that there should be uh, additional evaluation? Has the driver ever passed or had a problem passing any of the standardized um, screening tests like the CAGE or, or whatever your favorite one uh, might be? And is there a history of family substance abuse? And if the driver is using a, a scheduled drug, is it for therapeutic purposes, or is the goal to alter mood, or to extend physical limits, that is to be able to, you know, to, to get more hours in, and does the driver have a history of drug rehab? You are permitted uh, to, to ask these kinds of questions because they will help elucidate and help you form that opinion of whether you're going to certify this driver um, or not. Being involved in the SAP evaluation process, now this has to do with drug testing. Now I'm over at 49 CFR 40, you know, the drug testing rules, which again is not part of the medical exam, but if someone's involved uh, in, the, in the, the SAP part of the program, uh, that's, not, that's not a disqualifier. Uh, keep in mind though 
that participation in a self-help program uh, does not substitute for the SAP pr uh, process. But most important, if someone discloses to you that he or she is in a program, that is not a disqualifier. So someone in a program is, you know, that is not, that is not a reason to disqualify someone. If there is a substance abuse problem, same thing, you document when did it start, what's the diagnosis, what is the substance abuse, what are the medications, what's the treatment plan, are they sticking to it, and are you seeing the effect that you want. Same thing, uh, just repetition, driver is not qualified if he or she is using a Schedule One or um, any other uh, controlled substance unless it's been prescribed. Keep in mind uh, the disqualifier and no one's asked but I sort of I'll anticipate it. Uh, marijuana uh, continues to be a Schedule One uh, substance so you know uh, uh, that it, uh, there is no such thing as a legal prescription for marijuana. So that's, that's not something that you're going to uh, want to accept. Uh, again, I get this one comes up a lot, so just keep in mind that method, methadone for FMCSA purposes is a special category. That then leads into the discussion of Suboxone. Uh, suboxone, again, you're, back, you're left uh, with your own medical judgment. Uh, so even though Suboxone is used for some of the same reasons that, uh, as is methadone, as substance abuse, just the use of Suboxone is not necessarily a disqualifier, but getting back to the medical judgment thing, it's does the, the presence of sub Suboxone use indicate something that might be a disqualifier? And keep in mind the Suboxone itself does have side effects and you're going to have to decide whether you're comfortable signing your name to a card with the, if that person is, uh, is taking Suboxone. Again, keep in mind the effects, the side effects, the demands of the job, the, the fact that eating and sleeping may be irregular, the fact that taking the drugs on schedule may be a problem depending on on the nature of this, of this operator's uh, job. And then also, there's a requirement for some medications for monitoring, such as Coumadin, and also uh, appropriate storage of the medication. So you've got to take all these things into consideration for that particular driver before you decide whether you're going to put your name on his or her card. Uh, make sure that the driver has disclosed to you everything that he or she has taken. That is, not only the prescription drugs, but the over-the-counter medications. Remember, a lot of them, uh, a lot of them have uh, side effects. Diphenhydramine, Benadryl being a very good example. Uh, and then there's all of the different um, uh, supplements that people can buy. So you you're, you're make sure that they've all been disclosed to you and that you have reviewed with the driver uh, what the potential effects would be. Um, here are some of the, the questions that you can ask, some of the things you're going to be looking for in, in a driver. But again, remember to think about, are you getting the desired effect from the treatment? And are there any side effects that you would be worried about? Uh, it's also very useful to make sure that you review with the driver, does he or she understand how the medication is supposed to be used, and it may be worth your while to explain to the driver how to read the bottle label. These are all the same. Uh, now, uh, this you can read at your leisure. It, ex it explains the difference between regulations and guidance, and that's something that for, for exam purposes you should understand because remember, regulations mean you have to do it this way. Guidance means this is what we think you should do, but of course, you know, you're still free to, to, uh, to, to exercise your own clinical judgment. Uh, this I've included, again, just for your reading pleasure. It talks about how all of these regulations 
are, de are derived, you know, where they come from. And then, just to be complete, the last slide, this is the definition of chronic schizophrenia. So if you're thinking about, okay, what am I looking for to make that, that diagnosis, that disqualifier, th this is the, uh, chronic, the chronic schizophrenia. It's probably worth uh, memorizing this uh, in, case, in case you encounter it, uh, uh, well, in real life or in, for exam purposes. Right, and you're not being asked to make the diagnosis, uh, but if you have someone who comes in with, a, yes, I have a history of this, and I see Dr. So-and-so, and here's what I'm taking, yes, you've got to go through that whole decision tree to make sure that you're comfortable this being adequately treated and has been reevaluated re within the last two years and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, but similarly, you know, if, if, you, if you're confronted with someone who, you know, is hearing things, seeing things, is really inappropriate, this is where you're being asked to exercise judgment. And so